Welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be discussing eight ways that exercise affects your brain. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. The first way that exercise affects your brain is through attention. And exercise actually helps boost your individual alpha peak frequency. I will just abbreviate, abbreviate that as IAPF. And the IAPF measures your ability to focus and pay attention. And studies show that this increases after you do intense exercise. The key word here is that it has to be intensive. So like high intensity interval training versus a leisurely jog, a walk or a bicycle ride. It does not seem to increase the IAPF frequency. The second way that exercise helps boost your brain is memory. And exercise such as walking, jogging, it has to be aerobic in nature. It may help your brain's hippocampus. And that's the part that's linked to memory and learning. And, it can, and exercise has been shown to also slow the shrinking of your hippocampus, which can happen with age and that leads to memory loss as you get older. Some studies suggest that more benefits are seen if you like the activity that you're doing. The point of the story is, for example, I enjoy hot yoga a lot versus something like CrossFit, it's too hard on my body. So do something that you love and you will reap even more of the benefits. Number three, especially this past year, there has been an increase with depression and anxiety and exercise helps with depression and anxiety. Aerobic exercise seems to ease the symptoms of depression and anxiety. And I do notice this in my day-to-day -day life. Um, after I've been working for a few days and I haven't worked out, I feel the difference in my mood. And when I get to exercise, it really is like taking a happy pill. I feel so much better the rest of the day. And I have an autoimmune condition called Sjogren's. And when I don't exercise, I notice that my symptoms are worse versus when I do exercise, it does help with my symptoms. Now, scientists do say that it may take months to get the full benefit, so make a habit of being active. But again, on a day-to-day -day basis, you will also feel the difference in your day when you do or don't exercise. I'm addicted to exercise, guys, but there's worse things to be addicted to. The fourth way that exercise affects your brain is by keeping it what we say flexible. And when we mean flexible, we mean, we're talking about neuroplasticity. And I don't know if you've ever heard the saying that neurons that fire together wire together. But what that means is that your brain usually likes a set path. And if you are predisposed to anger, then the, the neurons that fired for anger tend to fire quicker and people that it's almost think about a path if you take a path every day when you go for a walk it becomes a well-worn path so it's easier to walk that path because now you've developed a trail versus walking on a new path the grass is the grass is still grown it hasn't been flattened down so in order to keep your your brain flexible and to be able to fire in other areas that it's not so used to used to firing in exercise does help with this. Essentially, neuroplasticity is the ability of your brain to change when you learn new things. Usually younger brains are better able to adapt and learn from changes. For example, just how young kids can pick up a new language versus older adults have a hard time learning a new language. And scientists believe that aerobic exercise and weight training helps make the brain more flexible or plastic in helping you learn more. Number five, it also may help prevent dementia. People who don't exercise are much more likely to get Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. And part of this could be because exercise helps prevent risk factors for dementia. And risk factors for dementia include obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and depression. So exercise has a direct effect on those, right? If you exercise, you're less likely to be obese. If you exercise, you're less likely to have high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and you're less likely to be depressed. But exercise has also been linked with more white and gray brain matter and less diseased tissue. So it's helping ward off dementia. Number six. It helps get blood to your brain. Part of this is because exercise makes your heart and your blood vessels stronger. 
The stronger that your blood vessels are, the better blood flow that is created. Strong blood vessels carry blood better through the brain. And it also appears to help stop the buildup of plaques linked to dementia. These plaques are called Lewy bodies. Scientists also believe strong blood flow helps nourish the brain in a way that slows mental decline. And there's still a lot that they're trying to learn and they're trying to figure out exactly how this works. Number seven, exercise boosts your brain's ability to connect the dots. And basically what we see is that in individuals that exercise, their ability to organize and interpret information is better. And this is something that is often referred to executive function. And over the long term, exercise seems to change the structure of white matter in your brain in a way that helps your brain cells connect. So again, if you have more pathways, you're able to access the information in your brain easier. And then reason number eight, it helps with sleep. Exercise helps people establish a healthy sleep-wake cycle. And people that exercise also tend to have more of the slow-wave sleep, which is a deep sleep that helps revitalize your brain. What's slow wave sleep or SWS? That refers to phase three of sleep. It's the deepest phase of non-rapid eye movement. So NREM, non-REM, and it's characterized by delta waves and delta waves are measured through an EEG and dreaming and sleepwalking can occur during SWS and SWS is important for memory consolidation. So imagine if you're getting more SWS sleep, then you are able to regenerate your brain, consolidate more memories, remember things better. Now, how much exercise should you be getting? Research shows that some of the best benefits come from an exercise session that lasts 45 to 60 minutes. I encourage you to start small and work up to it. And always get cleared first by your healthcare provider, but exercise is so therapeutic. The hardest part is starting, but once you get a habit of it, you will love it. Make sure you pick something that you love, that you enjoy, and um, figure out when. Schedule it in. Are you going to exercise before work? Are you going to exercise after work? Are you going to exercise during your lunch break, climb stairs, or during work? Drop a comment below. How are you going to exercise? Did you learn something new from this video? And um, what are your fitness goals? Best of luck to you and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. All right, until next time.